All right, algebra two. Today's lesson is called simplifying square roots. Okay, simplifying square roots. Well, we've been dealing with uh, stuff like this, where it's square root of 16, which is no problem. We say, okay, what number times itself is 16 is 4. Not a big deal. Um, and in our last lesson, I was allowing you to leave numbers like, if you were to get the square root of 12, you can leave it like that. Well, now we're going to learn how do you break down the square root of 12. Um, because although when you take the square root, it's not a whole number, we can still simplify it. Um, some more from there. So if I were to take the square root of 12, um, what I can do is actually break this up into factors. So what I'm going to try to do is make my list of factors here. So you have 2 times 6 and 3 times 4. What I want to do is look for one of those factors that is a perfect square. Now which one of these can I take a square root of? I can take the square root of 4 and get a whole number. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as the square root of 4 times 3. Because that's the same thing as saying 12. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. And now what we're going to do, um, I'll show you the long, not the long, but the step by step, is technically I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Because that's really what it is. And now I can take the square root of 4, and that becomes a 2. And what I'm left with on the inside is a root 3. So this is how we simplify um, square roots. So again, what we're going to try to do is find a factor. Okay, find the factor that's the perfect square. So we're going to take this and rewrite it underneath the root. Then we can break down the 4. All right, let's do a little bit of a harder one. 5 root 108. Okay, now 108 has a lot of factors. Um, so I'm just going to show you that the biggest square root you have is 36. That's a, Sorry, the, birth, the biggest square is 36. We can rewrite th uh, 108 as 36 times 3. Now what happens is you could take the square root of 36, which is 6. So now we have a 5 out there, but we're going to take the 6 out and bring it up front, and we're left with the 3. And so what you do is if you have a number in front, you're going to multiply those. So our final answer is going to be 30 root 3. That would be our final answer. Again, break down 108, find the biggest factor that's a perfect square, and then we're going to take that out by rooting it. 36, the square root of 36 is 6 times 5, which is 30. And we're still left with the root 3 underneath. Okay? Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's do another one. So the next one we're going to do actually requires variables now. So it's not just numbers, but variables as well. So again, the directions are simplify. Okay. We have 28 a to the 16th. We're going to take the square root of that. Okay. So again, 28 is not a perfect square, but what we, what we want to do is find a factor that is a perfect square. Well, I know 28, you have 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. That number right there is our perfect square. So we're going to break this up to be 4 times 7, and then we have 8 to the 16th. Now, like this problem, we're going to take, we know we take the one that's a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is 2. But now when you're dealing with variables, let me make that clear. When you're dealing with variables, uh, when you take the square root, you're just cutting the exponent in half. So this was a to the 16th. So when you take it out of the root, when you take the square root of it, it becomes a to the 8th. Because 8 times 8, 8 to the 8th, sorry, times a to the 8th is, remember, exponents, you add them, so you get a to the 16th. So that's my little proof to show that that works. Okay. And now we still have that root 7 underneath. So you can't, that doesn't, that doesn't just disappear. Um, we have to keep that 7 there because we did not uh, just eliminate it. All right, so the next problem we'll do is 2 root 45b to the 10th. Okay. So again, we have a 45 here. That's not a perfect square, but we can break that down. 
We have 1 times 45, 3 times 15, and also 5 times 9, which we see that 9 is our perfect square. So we can rewrite it as 5 times 9, b to the 10th. We take the square root of 9, that becomes a 3. But there's already 2 out there, so 2 times 3 is 6. Now we can take the square root of b to the 10th. Again, we cut that in half, so it becomes b to the 5th. And we're still left with the 5 underneath. That just doesn't go away. we got to have that in our answer because we could not take the square root of that. So our final answer would be 6, b to the 5th, root 5. Now the question is, what happens if our exponent is actually an odd number? Okay. Uh, because we don't want uh, we don't want fractions for exponents. So what we're going to try to do is break this down so that we have no fractions as exponents, but we take as much out as we can. Well, the 27 we could break down to be 9 times 3 because 9 is a perfect square. Now the question is, if this is odd, what you want to do, again, not a question, a statement, what you want to do is take as many as you can that's less than 9, but an even number. So 8 of the 8th, we can rewrite it like this. 8 of the 8th times 8 of the 1st. Therefore, we're going to be able to take out as many powers of 8 as possible. So take the 9 out, square root of 9 is 3. 3 stays underneath. 8 to the 8th, when you pull it out, becomes a to the 4th. Therefore, you're left with the 3 and the a on the inside because we weren't able to take those out. So we are left with 3 a to the 4th, root 3a. So again, odd exponent, just subtract 1 from it, so you get 8, and then we still write that 1 there. Again, it doesn't just disappear. So now we can pull out 8 to the 8th and becomes 8 to the 4th. And we're left with the 3a underneath. So let's do just a, a little bit harder of a problem. This is our last one, and we will be done. So we have 4a to the third b. And then on the inside of the root, we have 72 a to the seventh b to the tenth. So this is our term here. 4a cubed b root 72 a to the seventh b to the tenth. What we want to do again is break this down and just pull out as much as we can. So we have 4, 8 to the third b. 72, um, we have 1 times 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24. 4, that's a time sign, or clock sign. Uh, 4 times, I can't think right now, 18. Okay, there's so many factors here, and we have 8 times 9, 6 times, I skipped one, 12, okay. Anyways, you want to find the biggest number here that's a perfect square. So although 9 is a perfect square, 36 is actually the biggest one that we want to use. So we have 36 times 2, so let's get rid of those. Now here again we have an odd exponent, so we can rewrite a to the seventh as a to the sixth times a. Now this one's already even, so you don't want to change that. It's already even. Don't change even exponents underneath the root. So now we're going to take the square root of 36, which is 6, but we already have a 4 here, so you do 4 times 6, which is 24. a to the sixth, when you take it out, becomes a to the third. But there's already three exponents out here, so you're going to add those exponents. This comes out as a 3. There's already 3 there, so this becomes a to the 6 on the outside. The b to the 10th, okay, when you take it out, it becomes b to the 5th. And remember, cut the exponent in half. Well, there's 1 already here, and we just took 5 more out. So therefore, now it's b to the 6 also, because 1 plus 5 is 6. And what are we left with underneath? we're left with the 2a underneath. So this would be our final answer. So again, we want to take out as much as possible. That's the goal with these, with these problems. So good luck with that. That is how we simplify square roots. Um, if the number that we're dealing with is not a perfect square, we've got to break it down if we can. If it is, it just comes out and becomes a whole number. That's great. So. Good luck with that, and ask questions at school if you need more help.
All right. Good luck.